the Pictured Rocks episode is now public. You can watch it right now. Hopefully I'll remember to link to a card to this side of the screen. You know what I realized the other day is that I lack not so much subtlety, but balance. I'm either all the way in on something or all the way off of something. So something that has been on my mind a lot lately and has kind of been like a recurring theme in the vlog. Well, let me tell you the analogy my buddy AJ gave in regards to the best picture quality for video games. It can be really fun to find the best cables, to find the best TV, the best picture quality, best sound quality. But he said, at some point, you have to stop polishing the window and look outside of it. So in the video games case, at some point you have to stop improving picture quality and just play the games. Like that was the whole point in the first place. So many things are either a means to an end or an end unto themselves. This door is strictly a means to an end to get out of the house and to keep air from coming in when it's closed. As long as it's working, I think about this door never. I can open it, I can close it. Great, like that's the extent of how much I think about it. But take this camera. This camera ostensibly is just a tool to capture video. It is just like the door in that the door is helping you get outside. This camera is helping you record an image. It's slightly different from the door though because there's a lot more variables, like the door is just get in, get out. I don't care about anything else. And in the same way, you could look at a camera the same way. Does it record the picture and record the sound? Yes or no, can I see what has been recorded? Yes or no? If both of those are yes, then you're done. But there's so many factors that I add on to this. Is it usable? How does the picture quality look? How big is it? How heavy is it? How long can I use it? All of these things, at some point, you have to stop thinking about them, stop trying to improve them, stop trying to find the very best thing and just use it. But the weird thing is, is that improving this, thinking about this, getting new gear, and making this as efficient as possible, for some reason, kind of becomes an end unto itself, and I really enjoy that aspect of it. But lately, I feel like I've been getting way too into that, and thinking about it way too much, to the point of affecting my mental sanity to a degree where it's just like, yo, please, you have to stop striving for something better and just use what you have. But that's what I was talking about with balance. I need to find a better balance of, yes, try to improve it as best you can, make it work as best you can, but also just use it, okay? I don't need to be on the end of, okay, all I need is a camera that records video and sound. So this random scuba diving camera that's in the garage this one will work just fine. I don't have to be that far in on the using a potato side. But I also don't need to be on the end of constantly looking at ways to improve this camera to find the perfect camera. It's like this obsession for improvement in that area, it, it, in the end it kind of becomes hollow because once you've improved it to perfection, if you don't actually use the tool for its intended purpose, then you're just treading water and I mean, basically masturbating. Now, I don't have that problem, obviously, because I make a video every single day, so I'm using my tools. But lately, I feel like I've been spending way too much time trying to improve it, thinking about improving it, doing all this stuff, instead of just making something. And being sick and not being able to do any of that making that I normally like doing really put in the stark realization for me that spend as much time doing the part that makes you the happiest. It only makes me happy to improve my gear when I have the money to improve my gear, and it's a very clear path to improve it. Otherwise, it's just like frustrating, like, man, this isn't as good as I want it to be. This isn't as usable as I want it to be. But making a video, from shooting to editing to watching it afterwards, all of those are infinitely satisfying. They never stop satisfying. So obviously I'm not gonna just stop improving my camera gear and finding the best fit for me, but I think I'm gonna try and do my best to get a more balanced approach of focusing on it when I can and not focusing on it when I can't or when it's not necessary anymore. And you can just, let's use what we got, man. Let's enjoy what we got. Another reason why I've been thinking about this 
is because I just did a bunch of lens repairs. I'm very happy with the lenses I have now. And for right now, I'm not gonna be striving for a just slightly better lens that could just do slightly more. No, I've got what I need now. <coughs> Everything's in pristine working condition. It's time to just make stuff and stop thinking about it for my own mental sanity. It's time to relax. Relax. It's, it's all good, man. Just use it, which is what I fully intend on doing. Just look through the window. Stop polishing it. So I ended up getting a better kettlebell. This is like an Amazon Basics kettlebell. Amazon eventually is gonna sell everything and do everything. You're gonna go to Amazon College, you're gonna have an Amazon car, you're gonna have an Amazon house. I like this one a lot better than the other one that I got. The other one was so big, it might as well have been like a dumbbell. But this one, <coughs> I'm not gonna work out today, don't worry, I'm still sick. But this one I feel like it's much more kettlebell-ish. So as I mentioned earlier, I got a couple of my lenses fixed. This was one of them. I think today I'm finally gonna show you all of the lenses I use and why I use them and like, why did I spend the money to get this one fixed? Let's talk about that. So from left to right, here's what I got. This is my full frame camera, 55 millimeters, 16 to 35 millimeters, 80 to 300 millimeters, 50 millimeters, 24 to 70 millimeters. Let's talk about these four first. This is the Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter lens. Now I called it the 24 to 70 earlier. Let's switch to it right now. If I could only choose one lens, like I was on a desert island, this is the one I would choose because it's the most versatile. So I'm gonna be talking in 35 millimeter equivalent so that we don't have to keep changing numbers. This is the widest it can go right here. It's at 24 millimeters. It can zoom in all the way to 70 millimeters. So you can do shots like this and like if I were looking outside and I wanted to zoom in on that tree, I could just zoom in like this, pretty easy. And then the other thing I like about this lens is that it has a 2.8 aperture, which allows you to shoot in reasonably dark situations, not super dark, but it's also constant through the zoom range. So even if I zoom in, I can still use it in the same lighting conditions. Lots of times when you zoom in on a lens, it'll get dark, like uh, maybe down to this. It, it's just a fantastic lens that works really well. So the next lens that I have for this camera is the 50 millimeter F 1.7. So what makes this lens so special, it has a very big aperture. So you see how the background's pretty blurry right now? We can make that even blurrier. So now this is the other lens F 1.7. You can see how blurry the background is and also the plane of focus is extremely shallow, so you have to be just right in the right spot. That's probably it right there. So this lens is good for getting a really cinematic shot style, and I needed one for this particular camera. And it was also really cheap, it was only $150. And then next up is the one I got very recently. This is the 80 to 300 millimeter. It's just for getting like super zoomed in shots. It gets shots that look like this. This is 80 millimeters, zoom all the way in. And this is 300 millimeters, so we can get quite a bit of zoom there. Okay, so that brings me to my other camera. This camera is a full frame camera, which means that when you wanna get really blurry backgrounds, like we were talking about earlier, you can get really blurry backgrounds. But this is the lens that I broke when I dropped this camera. I got a replacement for it for a while that was only $200, and it was fine. But once you have experienced this and used this, and know the difference, it's really hard to go back and it was constantly nagging at my mind. Anyways, I bit the bullet and I spent the money and I got it fixed. This lens is the Zeiss 55 millimeter F 1.8. So as you can see, the plane of focus is extremely shallow. If I move forward or backwards, then I get out of focus. And you can also see the background is so blurry you can barely tell what it is. This lens is my favorite lens, but also not the most usable because you kind of need to be behind it and operating it and seeing what's in focus. And the field of view is kind of narrow, but it's the sharpest lens and the most beautiful looking lens I've ever personally used. Look how cool it looks when I film outside. Now, what's so cool about this lens, right now I'm shooting at f1.8, so you've got so much out of focus, but you've got like this sharp plane. It gives it like a super cinematic look. Like if I go back here, you can see that I'm in the background out of focus plane. And then as I walk into it, you can come in focus. When I first found out you could do this with consumer cameras, I was so excited and they look so cool. But this lens in particular does it better than any other lens I've ever used. 
Finally, that brings me to the last lens of the bunch, the Zeiss 16 to 35 millimeter F4. So unfortunately I lost the audio for this, so I'm doing a voiceover, but I'm talking about the 16 to 35 millimeter lens. This is the lens I've used by far the most on the vlog and I got it in Japan. So I actually have to thank Michael for helping me barter with the guy at the uh, big camera where we bought it. I'm talking about how it's super wide at 16 millimeters. And if you go to the edge of the frame, it actually distorts you can see that there. But the cardinal rule of any video is that the viewer needs to be able to see what you're trying to film. So with a 16 millimeter, basically you just point the camera in the general direction and you're gonna capture what you're looking at. So when I was doing lots of vlog shots like this whenever I'm traveling, this is really good for that because you can just point it at yourself, everything's gonna be more or less in focus and you'll be able to see everything. And this is also what we used with our Steadicam for Adventure Archives for a long time. Because when you have a lens this wide, even if the camera shakes a little bit, it'll still more or less look really smooth because changes in the image won't be that big because you're seeing most of everything. So even if the camera tilts a little bit, it doesn't matter. So this is actually a zoom lens. So you can zoom in to 35 millimeters. So it's slightly more versatile than just being a super wide lens. So with this lens combined with my 55 millimeter on my Sony camera, it's kind of a complete set for everything that I need it to be. Well, I just recorded this whole segment. We had lots of great times. Yeah. Talking about the pizza, the homemade pizza my mom made. And it was good. And we need some more of it. <coughs> Sorry, it was a great scene, but I forgot to press record. <laughs> That's gonna do it for today's vlog. Thank you very much for watching. Another vlog tomorrow. It's good to be back. I'll see you tomorrow. When it comes out, I'm not gonna just like go goo goo for Gaga. Is that, that's not a thing.